8 losses out of 10, no new manager, and if we lose today, it's almost guaranteed that we're in the relegation zone. Yes, today is crucial as Hull City take on Blackpool in the 15th round of the most exciting league in the world, the EFL Championship. With the Tigers in the worst form for years, no win away all season and a huge loss in confidence, as well as a tremendous form for Blackpool and shining lone star Charlie Bettino on fire this season. It may seem, and I do believe, that we're going to get battered again. But, always keep optimism this year, unless you're a Hull City fan. Anyway, here's all the information you need to know about tonight's 7.45pm kickoff. Today, we take a look at our host, Blackpool FC. Blackpool, who shared promotion with the Tigers, are having a very unusual start to the season, with wins against the big teams and losses against smaller clubs. Blackpool currently sit 19th in the Championship, with 4 wins, 4 draws and 6 losses, but... With many stars in their team, including Reese Williams, Theo Corbinu and Charlie Patino, they're always an exciting team to watch. Today will be another good chance for Blackpool to climb up the championship table. Now, we we'll move on to the history between the two sides, and you may ask, why am I so positive? Well, for the first time in one of my vlogs, Hull City have finally beaten a team in head-to-head -head stats. Yes, they played each other on 106 occasions, with the Tigers winning 40 times, Blackpool winning 35 times, and respectively 31 games that ended in a draw. Last competitive game ended in a 1-0 win to Blackpool, with a goal and a penalty by Gary Medin made sure Blackpool took home all three points. Today, we're at Bloomfield Road, home of Blackpool FC, so we'll be increasing our total mileage up by 260 miles and making it 1,893 miles. Well then, that's enough from me at my home. I'll see you once we arrive in Blackpool and also to see the illuminations. Because I'll tell you now, there's more shining stars there than there is on that old city team. But I suppose, have to keep some optimism. Could be only 4-0 to Blackpool. Up the Tigers! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, after three long, cold and gruelling hours, we have finally arrived here at Bluefield Road, home of Blackpool FC. And although they say it's sunny Blackpool, it is absolutely freezing. And it was chucking it down about an hour ago. Now, it's exactly an hour before kickoff, and the lineup has just been announced. And I can say, on behalf of the whole Hull City fan base, we are very confused on what Andy Dawson is doing. To start with, he's dropped Oscar, the championship top goal scorer. He's dropped Tufan, one of our best midfielders. And he's also dropped Cynic, who's probably the best player in our team from what I've seen of him so far. And I think we've forgotten about Tyler Smith because Will Jarvis is on the bench. And although we love Will Jarvis, we've had Tyler Smith for years. I don't have a clue what we're doing. The only positive I can take from this result, and I can tell you now I'm very much not optimistic for today. I've gone for 4-0 Blackpool. But I suppose... Blackpool is full of national treasures. Charlie Patino for one, and also some fish and chips. Absolutely beautiful fish and chips. And I think uh, that'll be my highlight of the day because honestly, the lineup, the team, how we've been playing recently, I can see it being in double figures by half time. Now, briefly, I did touch on the lineup, and it's absolutely shocking. We've got no strikers, no decent midfielders, but I suppose Fleming's back, which is a good thing. He's back from injury. And him and Keen Lewis Potter's link up was absolutely phenomenal last year. I'm not sure I will work with Pelkas and Cynic, but we'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. But without further ado, here's your Hull City lineup to take on Blackpool FC. In goal, Nathan Baxter, the captain once again, Jacob Greaves. The two other centre backs are Alfie Jones and Tobias Figueredo. The four in midfield are Greg Doherty, Ryan Woods, Jean Mike Aseri, and 50 grand Regan Slater. And the three up front is Cyrus Christie, Ryan Longman and Demetrius Pelkas. What a strange lineup. We've got no strikers. We won't score a goal. We never score a goal anyway. So, honestly, 10-0 Blackpool. Now on to the Blackpool team. And I usually don't mention about the opposition, but if you didn't know already, I collect football shirts for my dad who's got dementia and I have an Instagram page for it. And uh, two of the Blackpool players follow and uh, they're very nice and they are starting today. So Charlie Patino and Theo Corbino, all on loan. Most of Blackpool's team is on loan, if I'm being honest. They've got Perveda from Leeds, Patino from Arsenal, and Corbinu from Wolves, and they're starting today very deadly, ripping it up in the Championship and a very big future. And I don't think our defence can honestly handle it because we aren't the quickest in defence. Louis Coyle's not here, and it is going to be a very shaky game. Now, there is some upsetting news. We haven't got Leo. 
We haven't got Lucas and we haven't got Joe, but we have got a little surprise here. Now, we're actually joined by my mother. Now, she doesn't want to be in it, but we have to get a score prediction from someone. So, Mum, what, are, you, are you optimistic at all? No. No. Okay. So, just what's your score prediction for today? 4 0 Blackpool. Who's going to score? Tina. Just for Tina. No, Patrick for Tina and. Corbino? Corbino. Patrick yeah. for Charlie. Yeah, none of us are optimistic. I've talked to quite a few Hull City fans on Instagram or here at the stadium, and no one is optimistic. And I can't blame them. I was thinking, you know, 5 or 6 nil today, but seeing that lineup, double figures by half time. Now, we are also here, joined by my mate who comes to most away games. Now, you know what I'm going to ask you, because I've been nagging you for the past month to be in a score prediction. Yeah. What's your score prediction for the day's match? 6 0 Blackpool. <laughs> um, Patino, Corbiano, and um, Veda. Yeah, three, three youngsters that are very deadly. Well, you've heard it from me, you've heard it from my mother, and you've all heard it from my mate. None of us are optimistic. Now, I'm going to watch Nathan back to warm up because we always come out half an hour before the game. And if there isn't any interruptions, or if the goals are the right length this time, I will see you at kickoff. Up the Tigers, I suppose. Five minutes before kickoff, and we moved to the back row. And honestly, behind me is a lovely view of Blackpool. So I suppose once we're 4 0 down, we can watch the Blackpool illuminations from the stadium. Absolutely beautiful. Here we have it Bull City versus Blackpool in the 15th round of the AFL Championship. Every week we get less and less excited to watch Hull City. And I suppose Nathan Back City's League One's goalkeeper kit. The atmosphere isn't as good as usual, but you can't blame people. So Wednesday night, it's cold and we're playing absolutely awful. If there is a miracle out there, we need to pray. Because getting a win is near impossible. Blackpool to pick up the first half. Go on, City! Grand 50 grand, I say! 50 grand, 50 grand, Regan Slater! Not even 30 seconds in, and behind me, fans are throwing eggs. Oh dear. Go on, Regan. Go on, shoot! Oh. You know what, he's giving it a go. That's what we need. Regan Slater, eight minutes in and it's been mainly all City so far. I haven't really been watching because people are throwing stuff behind us. I ain't a clue what's going on, but City's got the majority of the possession now. Minutes in and I'll tell you what, Greg Doherty, what a signing. We haven't played him for a few months and he's probably the best player on this pitch right now. The Greg Doherty chance has been played about five times. What a player. It's been mainly City, we aren't playing it back as well. Sloppy. And I'll tell you what, there's a chance. Not a lot, but a little bit of a chance. We can we lost today. We all don't care. 20 minutes in. And I don't know what's happened in the past week, but we're actually playing like a team. This is the best I've seen us play all season since you know the Norwich game when we're actually winning something. And I'm not saying I feel confident that we're gonna get a result out of this, but it's not gonna be as bad as we thought. We're actually passing like a team. It seems like we've gelled together these past two or three weeks. Just a shame we can't shoot. Ryan, go on, Ryan. Ooh. Well in, Ryan. Hey, Dawson, Dawson, give us a wave. Hey. Corner of the game where they've both been cities. We're playing. I just don't know how to explain it because we've never been playing like this. Go on. Go on. And the limbs in your way in as he finally scored away. Come on! I think it was Ryan Longman. <laughs> Playing from falling rows and rows in front of them. We're winning! Come on! I've just got my breath. And you'll never guess who it was. 
Ryan Longman. Booed off the pitch two weeks ago. Scored for City. And they nearly just scored. This is the first time since Burnley. We're finally winning. We have nearly lost my voice. Court City. Take my own I do. But I can't help falling in love with you. Let's I go. And the party is over. An equaliser by number 12. You can't fault it. The half volley is an incredible finish. But we keep singing. We've scored once, we can score again. The team keep the spirit. Incredible. And I'll tell you what, the Blackpool fans are amazing. They live up to the standards that we've been told about. Fair play, an incredible shot. But we're still in this. Six minutes and the atmosphere is still electrical. We haven't dropped our heads and we're keeping going for it. We've got a corner now. Although the party only lasted five minutes, we enjoyed every single bit of it because we had this score. I'm keeping optimism because I never thought we'd score today. I never thought we'd have a sniff of a goal. I would say we've been probably the better side so far. 43 minutes, two minutes to go in the first half, and I'll tell you what, what a half it's been. Hey look, we kept a clean sheet for 30 minutes, I think that's the best of the season. Honestly, I can't be more proud of Ryan Long and Craig Doherty. Incredible half. Now look, we're still in this game, and I think one opportunity. We bring Oscar, Ozan and Sinekor, they're three players that can change this game. And we're right back. And I think we might win. And I haven't said that for a while. Fifth minute, there's been three minutes added on and we're playing a lot better. Since that goal's gone in, we've kept our heads up on our prize. Frank! Oh! Oh my! Oh my! Frank Doherty, take a bow! Frank, a bow, son! What a head, son! What a head! Frank Doherty! Come on! Take your bow, son! What a hit, son! I'm stealing the Stephen Gerrard commentary. He's been the best player all his half. He did it from 35 yards out into the top corner. And we're winning! Come on! Sweden, he's hanging for a reason. He keep it up this season. Great dog, Time! We're winning! That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Great Doherty. He's better than Modric. What a <laughs> Oh dear. Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls. What a half of football. Greg Doherty take up our son. What an eventful first half from the first 30 seconds from people behind us throwing eggs, throwing elf bars, throwing whatever they can at us. But we're winning for the first time away all season. Bull City are winning a game. And I'm here with my mum as well. She wants to change her score prediction. I don't know how that's fair. But mum, take it away. Definitely, Paul City, 3 <laughs> Hey, there we go. I've lost my voice. From the first goal, I feel so proud for Ryan Longman. From him getting jeered off the pitch from them singing, he's not fit to wear the shirt, to scoring, and the limbs in the way in. It's our first goal from months away. Honestly, what an achievement for Ryan Longman, and there's more to come. His parents are usually in the crowd, and they're so proud of him, like, oh. What a goal. Even when they scored that goal, the equaliser, it was a fantastic goal and fair play to Blackpool fans. They have incredible limbs. They're chanting the full game, fair play. I've been told they're a great set of fans and I have to agree. But we kept our heads up, we kept confident. And honestly, there's a lot more to come. We've got Ozan, we've got Cynic. <sighs> we've got such a quality bench. We bring them on, they change the game. Ozan too, fan. One of the best midfielders for Hull City coming on the pitch. We can we can do a lot here. Honestly, never in a million years did I think Hull City would win this game. I never thought we'd score to be 2 1 up and Greg Doherty take a bow. Wow, honestly. I was saying at the start of the game, Hull City only score tap ins. We never score any good goal but Greg Doherty. Wow. But there's still a long 45 minutes to go. The game is not over, so we can't stop. We have to keep singing and we can't celebrate too early because we know what we're like. 
we concede again, we drop our heads a little bit, we didn't the first goal but we know how dangerous Blackpool are, the City players coming over to clap the fans, we know how deadly they can be, Charlie Bettino, Theo Corbino, one shot from them, one piece of magic and we're right back where we were at the start. I'm not going to touch on this too much but in the 30 seconds and I'm not saying it's a Blackpool fan so I'm not going to blame anyone on this but a group of people outside the stadium, I don't know whether you can see here, there's a there's a big bunch of houses as well, they're throwing eggs, they're throwing elf bars, they're throwing whatever they can and it's hit quite a few of us, luckily I haven't been hit just yet but there's just no need for it, honestly there's, there's banter in football, you can chant but there's no need for violence because we've done nothing wrong, we're singing, we're supporting our team I don't know who they are, so I'm not going to say the Blackpool fans because the Blackpool fans are being spot on, they seem all nice outside the stadium and obviously they might not be Blackpool fans because they're not watching the game but there's just no need for it I'm not going to waffle for too long because I want to keep my voice. I'm going to try and sing for the full half, but I'm not sure at the end of the game when I get home and try and do a match recap. I don't think it'll be possible, but we'll give it a go. So proud today. I don't know. I didn't think we had a chance with that lineup. No Oscar, no Ozan, no Cynic, but we've, we've done it. But we haven't done it yet. But we're nearly there, halfway there. Bring on the second half. And the Tigers are back onto the field. I usually say a masterclass Andy Dawson team talk, but I don't think we need it. No substitutions by the look of it. And it's Demetrius Belkast to kick off the second half. Come on, City. We believe. Us fans believe. Can the team believe and dream? Come on, City. Breathe it in, ladies and gentlemen. There's not many times that I can say that we're winning away. Breathe it in. Take the score line in. Something that's changed in the past week. Demetrius! Go on, Demetrius! Oh! Go on, City! Go on, cheer the boys! City, make some noise! 57th minute. Take this out for the in. This is electric. We never win. We never score. And I think today we could get three or four here. If we keep this attitude in the full second half, we'll bring on Oscar. Honestly, I do believe we could get the three points here. Can anyone let me know why uh, Blackpool fans are waving their torches to around the 63rd minute? I'm not sure whether it's. I'm not sure. 65th minute, there's still no sign of a substitution for all City. Ozan, Cynic, and Sean McLaughlin have been warming up on the side for about half an hour now. We trust Andy Dawson though, we're winning. That's all that matters. That's all that what matters. It's all City are winning. I would like Oscar on the pitch though. But someone will catch him up at some point. As you can hear, the Ryan Longman chant is out. Because Oscar is stupid and is stripped and ready at the touchline. And it is substitution. And coming off is Ryan Longman. Absolutely incredible today. Fair play to Ryan Longman. He's got his goal. He's got what he deserved. And coming on is a championship top goal scorer. Oscar Estupinian. Think about it. We've still got Ozan. We've still got Cynic on the bench. Whoa. Oh, there is another substitution. Seri's coming on. And Dohan Cynic is coming on. Dohan Cynic playing really well the times I've seen him. Well played, Seri. One of his better games for City. And well played, Ryan Longman. Hopefully. We keep hold of this lead. 75th minute, 15 minutes left and it's going to be a very shaky 15 minutes. The past five minutes, I've been all Blackpool. Theo is running laps around Jacob Lewis. He just doesn't have the pace, he's not a left back. But we're still winning that same thing. Oscar's on the pitch. And I think we get one goal, we finish the game off and we can go home happy. Jacob Graves, I don't believe this. Jacob. <laughs> God slits. Ah! We've done it! We have done it! Ah! We have done it! We have won! The Lings! Richard Slater! 3 3 1! Come on! We have done it! What a finish! It's a good reflection! But it gets one! We're 3 1 up! We won away! And Andy Dawson is out the wheel. Go on! Yeah. Come on! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hey, team! <laughs> We've won. Oh, it feels like months have, since I've said that. Still got a lot of things to work on. Will we play like this? Then we might not get relegated, will we? More fun, <laughs> it's been a long while since we've seen this. Three gentlemen, Oscar in its hand, City going to Waverley. Another substitution for Hull City. Demetrius Belkas, well played. He's coming on, coming on. Has returned from injury. Brandon Fleming. Wow, what a game. 88 minute, two minutes left. Oh, wow. What a win, what a game, what a team. I've been saying for weeks, Greg Doherty should start. When we get all our injured players, you have to remember Aliyah, Ben Tete, that Salah from Arsenal. So many quality players in our team that are injured at the moment. At the start, I said it's the weakest, weakest whole team that we've had all season. And we've come away with three points against a very informed and shining team with full of Premier League youngsters. I couldn't be more proud. We played so well. That great Doherty shot come out. That'll be on repeat for about a week until he scores next week, hopefully. Wow. Just taking this atmosphere. Oh. Double substitution for the Tigers. Sean McLaughlin. I know Zantou fan coming on. You know what? Who cares? We've won. That's the main thing. Greg Doherty coming. Oh no, Greg's not coming off. Is he coming off? Who knows? Cyrus Chris is coming off. We know that for definite. And so... Is Regan Slater. 50 grand. 50 grand. Regan Slater. And there's been eight minutes of added time. Let's get another two, come on. Falling in love with you. Two, five. Shouldn't be long left now. Any minute now, ref. Be absolutely beautiful. There we have it. Full 63. Blackpool won. And for the first time this season, Full City have won away. I honestly don't believe this. <laughs> Go on, what a performance, Greg Doherty, the next Luko Modric. What a performance from the lads, I don't believe this. I'll see you when we get home. Let's go and party in Blackpool. What a performance. We need to keep this for the next upcoming weeks. I'll see you when I get home. He's Glaswegian. He signed for us for a reason. Ladies and gentlemen, don't scratch your eyes. Yes, Hull City have finally won away. Hull City 3, Blackpool 1. What a game. What a result. And Greg Doherty, what a man. Let's be truthfully honest here. No Hull City fan in that stadium had one inkling of hope for this team today. I said 10-0 at half-time. And I wish I was joking. People saying 4 Six nil to Blackpool, and it really did look like that. But that team today, that Andy Dawson team talk. Now looking at that lineup, that was probably the worst possible Hull City lineup we've had all season. And how have we pulled out three points, three goals, and a very happy Hull City fan base? People will be excited to go to matches again. Well, should we try and keep our containment because we're still near enough? in the relegation zone. To start it off, I am immensely proud of Ryan Longman for what he went through. The Huddersfield game, he was booed off the pitch. People singing, you're not fit to wear the shirt. And we spoke to him at the Birmingham game and he was full of confidence. He said, yes, it wasn't his best game, but he kept his head held high. He's been training and it paid off today. Wow, it may not have been the best goals. It was a fluky corner, but that will do him the world of good in confidence. The second goal, Greg Doherty. I think I heard the Glaswegian chant about 80 times today, but it was well-deserved. A 45-yard out, hits it, top right corner, blown us away. Honestly, the limbs in the away end when we went 2-1 up was absolutely fantastic. Fair play to you, Greg Doherty. Always been a fan favourite, always a lovely guy, always will stand and have a chat with you. And you know, 
he deserves it. He really does. And then the third, the final goal, the goal that topped the three points and made sure Hull City won the game. Yes, Regan Slater's, well, I'm not going to say it was an absolutely banger of a shot because let's be realistic, it's a good deflection. But Regan Slater has been trying long shots for the past couple of months and today it finally pays off and he finally gets his goal. He's finally on the mark and it just completes a wonderful performance for the Tigers now. I don't know how long we're going to keep this for because usually we win one, we get our confidence back and then we get battered again. But we have got another Yorkshire derby to hopefully keep our spirit going. Now onto both sets of fans and for me they were both amazing. Now I was stood right at the back in the centre of all the noise of whole city. So obviously I can't rate it as far as if you're in the opposite stands. But just let me know how we were. We might not have been the best foot for us. We were loud, we were energetic and we kept singing throughout the whole game. The Blackpool fans, well, before I was there, I was told how good you would be, how electric the atmosphere. You were all stood up, you were all clapping and you lived up to that standard. Fair play to you all. I wish you all the best for the rest of the season. You've got some very shining stars there. You've got Reese Williams, Ian Pervader. You've got Charlie Bettina and obviously Theo Corbino, who all played fantastic. I don't know whether Pervader got onto the pitch, but the three that were... Charlie Patino, man of the match performance for me. I met him outside, a lovely guy, and I wish you all the best for the season. And uh, who knows, by the time you play us back at the MKM, we're probably back to our normal selves, losing every week. Another thing to add, Brandon Flamin makes his first appearance since pre-season when he picked up that injury. He's finally back in the Hull City shirt. He's ready and he looks deadly as ever. We know last season, the Keen Lewis Potter and Brandon Flamin link up, but... In all fairness, Callum Elder's not done anything wrong to be dropped yet, but it'll be interesting to see who Andy Dawson picks. And that also moves on to who will our next manager be? Do we keep Andy Dawson? Apparently, there's quite a few different managers who are international managers that are in the lineup. One last thing before I do finish this outro is that in the first minute, and I've said this quite a few times in the vlog, but in the first minute, a group of people outside the stadium, so I'm not saying the Blackpool fans, I'm not saying the Hull fans, I'm not saying the football fans in general, but a group of people were throwing eggs that cracked on people's backs. They were throwing vapes, which could really damage someone's head if thrown in the wrong part. And they were throwing a lot of things that could seriously hurt someone. Now, there's no need for this. No matter if you're a football fan, if you're not, whether you have rivalries, you should never use violence in a football stadium and especially not at someone's back of the head. And I just don't think there's any need for it. But we have to keep positive. Hull City finally won a game and today there was some passion in this club. The players on that pitch actually looked like they wanted to play in that Hull City shirt. Greg Doherty, the passion. Every time we got a throw in, a free kick, a corner, a goal, he was celebrating. He loves it. We love it. And we've actually got the three points. Now we move on to the next fixture. Yes, our third Yorkshire derby of the season. Hull City take on Rotherham United in a packed out away end. Yes, it's going to be bouncing. 2,500 Hull fans at Rotherham. Hopefully, with a win under our belt, the fans back in the players, and hopefully the players in fine form, we can get another three points. We give Tom Eves a big welcome, we sing Eves, we clap, and hopefully, just hopefully, we can get some more points under the belt, because that would make our weekend. Yes, it's on Saturday, so there we go. But, thank you so much for watching this vlog. An amazing result, and I hope if you have enjoyed, please, if possible, like, subscribe, and maybe even turn on your notifications so you'll find out when we next win a game, which won't be for a while, so don't get too excited. But yes, what a result. 3-1, <sighs> Greg Doherty. But again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on Saturday, possibly Sunday morning, but don't wait up for it. I'll see you soon. Up the Tigers!